I think the first one that we should just spend a little time on is the horizon that we've called the LFH horizon. And it's, uh, as I said, it's about probably about four centimeters thick. And uh, if we get a, a sample of it, um, you know, we find it's a pretty loose sort of layer of decomposing uh, leaves and, uh, f you know, small twigs. In this case, there's some grass, so there'd be some uh, grass and some of the vegetation that's here. If we look at this particular I I material that I have in my hand, I think most of this I would, although we call the horizon in total an LFH, sort of grouping all three together, this seems to be mainly what we would call the F layer because it's, it's sort of moderately decomposed. It's starting to break down, but you can still see that it's come from leaves and grass uh, and so forth. The color of the LFH, we often don't worry too much about that, but for this particular situation, we'll notice that the, the color of this LFH horizon, it's quite dark, and so it comes out to be 10YR2 uh, two over 2, this particular, um, this particular uh, color chip right down here. It's good to... Uh, to record that in the soil profile description because they're not always th this color. So if there's some something that's a bit different, it's, it's good to know. We're then going to move to the AE horizon. That's the horizon from about here, about the, the zero, min uh, zero depth on the, in the mineral soil, down to about 15, perhaps 17 centimeters. And I have here a sample of that AE uh, taken from just over there. And you notice right away, this is, a, this is a natural plane of, 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 of it broke, and you can see it's, it's quite, quite flat. And I think if we, hopefully we can take a closer look at some of the structure and find out that it, it is, although it's not breaking as nicely as I would hope, it does have, a, in this case, a, just a bit of a, of a tendency to break more along a, a, a lateral or horizontal planes than it does in a vertical way. And, and we call that uh, plate light structure, we call it platy structure. So in this case, I would describe this as being a, a sort of a weak, um, medium platy structure in the in the AE horizon. Very very characteristic of gray luvisol soils to have a platy structure in the AE horizon. The uh, the color of the AE horizon, well, it's a gray soil. If we if we do the color, we compare it here on the on the color chart. It comes out to be uh, actually it's 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 interesting and it it is certainly is has a higher value, meaning that it's a lighter color, and it actually has a fair bit of chroma because it's uh, somewhere over here, I would think at least uh, a chroma of two, perhaps, uh, you know, two going on three. So it's a, it, it's still a gray, but it's, it's a little bit of a grayish brown uh, AE horizon. So the AE horizon, a platy structure dominantly, and a color that we've described as, as 10YR, uh, 6 over 2, or that will come out as a very light grayish brown. Moving then to the BT horizon, the BT goes from here, about um, about 17 centimeters, down to about 45. It's uh, about 30 centimeters thick. Once again, I have a sample that I've taken out already, uh, just just to, sh to show in a little more detail. Now, if we break it, uh, Break it in, uh, along uh, the natural planes of, you know, of, uh, of weakness where the particles, uh, where the soil structural aggregates sort of just naturally break up into. We'll see that uh, it has a, a blocky structure. If we look at the uh, in detail, uh, the blocky structure is really uh, it's uh, there's a bit of a, a coarse blocky structure. But if you if you break it even finer. Uh, I think the dominant structure here, I would say, is about of a is a is a, a blocky structure but because they're rounded kind of blocks. We call that subangular blocky, and so we have here a, a, a medium subangular blocky structure in the BT horizon. Once again, pretty typical of gray luvisol soils. In terms of soil color, uh, we, using this the, the, the chart, we find out that. There's rich colors in this BT in this BT horizon, strong strong reddish brown colors, and so the color comes out to be, I would say that it's somewhere. Uh, I think I'm going to say that it's 10 YR uh, four over four, which is uh, uh, you know, I think it's uh, 
it's, it comes out as, as being uh, a reddish brown, a reddish brown color. So we have the, um, the BT being uh, brown uh, with, a, with a subangular blocky structure. The sea horizon, and I have a piece of it here. Uh, actually, the piece I have here is, I think we, we'll describe it as massive because it really doesn't, it doesn't have any structure that results from soil formation. It's more or less, if you break it, it seems to break equally well in all, all directions. And maybe it breaks into a, a bit of a, a blocky structure, but I think that's mostly a consequence of the way the material is, right? So uh, that's the, the sea horizon. Uh, the color of the sea horizon, I think it's really typical of our, of our glacial tills in Saskatchewan. Um, it's, uh, it's, it comes out to be uh, quite light in color, and it's, uh, I'm going to say that it's, um, oh, I guess I'm going to say that it's 10YR uh, 6 over 3, uh, which puts it into the uh, very, very uh, light yellowish gray, uh, or grayish yellow, I think it goes uh, sort of category. But that is the kind of color we have is, is very typical of, uh, of, of glacial tills in, in this part of Saskatchewan. And a, a part of that relates to the fact that it does have calcium carbonate in it, which I think gives it that light, that light color. Uh, 